Hello everyone! In this video, our baby shark is literally going on its first adventure. In our previous shark video, we've created the rig controllers for this character. Now, let's make this shark's dream come true, to be where the people are. Today I'll demonstrate the entire process from beginning to end. I won't be going into too many details today, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment. For these types of animations, I'd like to have a split view. The first one is the front view and the second one is a side view. Let's go! Our first pose is a contact pose. One leg is going forward, while the second is moving backwards. I will also immediately select the group of controllers. You can do this by pressing Ctrl plus the number. For the upper body, I'm selecting hotkey Ctrl 1. I'm also creating two hotkeys for arms and legs. Oh, fins and legs and I'll create the fourth hotkey for the tail. Now selecting a group of controllers is going to be very easy. Now I press 1, selecting the upper body of the character, and rotating it slightly towards the back leg. At the same time, I'm keeping the head facing forward. To move the entire tail at once, I'm selecting the group of controllers on the tail. Now I'm selecting the arms and making them move opposite to the legs. In other words, the left arm is moving backwards, then the left leg should go forwards, and vice versa. The first contact pose is ready. Next, I'll create the second contact pose. Select Mirror Pose, and then Mirror on Current Frame. I'm setting the interpolation between the two poses. Next, I select the arms point controllers and put them on a separate track. This way, I'll be able to create a separate interpolation for this track. For the arms interpolation, I select FK from the menu, in order to make our arms move from the shoulders. Ideally, once you've created the rig, you can also separate all the controllers into separate tracks. Alternatively, you can also create new tracks when you need them. That's what I usually do. Now let's add additional keys. First, I need a key between the two poses of contact. I'm lifting my character up a little bit. Since our shark's legs are a little bit short, it might be difficult to tell which leg is currently above the ground, so I'm going to exaggerate the pose a little bit. Let's let our shark lift their legs slightly sideways. Oh, just look at that, so cute! Now our shark is walking. So far, the shark is only walking with one leg. I've noticed that our character is a little too low to the ground and currently is falling through the floor. Since I've changed the first frame, I'll need to mirror it again. I'm going to the mirror tool again and selecting mirror on current frame. The two keys need to be identical. You can also create more details by adding more keys. I would also recommend checking your animation every now and then throughout the entire process. I decided to remove the extra keys from the arms. This way it will be easier for me to control that position. I can change it by changing just one frame in the middle. Our first step is ready. Now I'm going to create all the frames and then mirror them to create the second step. This way, I now have an entire walking sequence, where the first and the last frames are identical. For more natural movement, for the arms, I'll select the interpolation bezier. Now I need to create the cycle. In this cycle, I will have all the frames of the animation except for the last key, since the last key is identical to the first one. And here is my walking cycle. Let's take a look at what we can do using Autophysics here. 
I'm not really worried about the balance without cartoony looking character. That's why I'm going to turn off the physics corrector. However, the second motion controller is going to be very useful. When using a custom rig, secondary motion function is not going to automatically pick up all the points. Let's do this manually. I would like to use a secondary motion for the tail points. For this, there is no one-size-fits-all solution. So let's just play around with it until we like the final result. Let us know in the comments if you need more details on how to use secondary motion with custom rigs. Here you can see how the tail movement changed. Now we can snap the animation and auto physics together. But I still want to work on it for a little bit longer, so I'm gonna go back to interpolation. I want to smooth some of the details, so I'm going to be manually correcting them. By the way, right here it's a good idea to select a separate track for the tail. Auto Physics has already done most of the work here. I'm just polishing some details. I'm using trajectories here to make all the movements a lot smoother. Here is the final animation that I have. It might not be perfect yet, but it was a very quick process. I'm also really enjoying animating this character. So adorable. Let me know in the comments what characters are your favorite. Thank you everyone. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and be the first to get all the news and updates from Cascada.